Derby class here in Missouri. We'll tell you about it right now. exactly what we did. We took a seven hour class and learned a lot of great information. In fact, I took 23 pages of notes and feel like I still have a ton to learn. So it was definitely worth the drive for us. We spent a lot of time learning about bee biology and during that time we learned about the three types of bees in a hive. Those being the queen bee, the worker bees, and the drones. One type of bee is the worker bee. These make up the majority of the hive there's up to 30,000 of them in any given hive. And they do exactly what their name implies, work. They do all of the work of the hive. They're female, so of course they do. But here, our instructor will tell you a lot more information about them. Word on the left is the worker bee. That's the bee that you always see out in the fields or whatever else, working on the flowers, plants, and whatever else. They do all the work in the beehive. They gather water, nectar, pollen with the hive. Inside the hive, they take care of the queen. They carry out the dead. They feed the larvae. They air condition the hive. They guard the hive. They do everything in the hive. Everything. And because of this, from March through October, they only live six weeks. They work themselves to death. For those six weeks of their lives, they'll spend the first three working inside the hive and the second three working outside of the hive. Now the difference between the worker bees and the queen bee, the main one is that the worker bees are underdeveloped females. They cannot mate. And this is the main difference between them and the queen. And that brings us to the second bee of the hive, the queen. She is the most important bee in the hive. The hive cannot live without her, and she cannot live without the hive. There is only one queen per hive, and she only has one job, and that is laying eggs. She will lay between one and 2,000 eggs a day, which I know if I was responsible for, I'd want all those little workers working around me doing everything else because I'd be a little tired. Here, our instructor will tell us a little more about this. There's a queen. It would have to be marked, see the circle around her? If she's not laying eggs, they will be attending to her, cleaning her and feeding her. So you gotta look for a circle of bees. There'll always be bees around her if she's not laying eggs, always. In the wild, a queen of a hive will live for about five years. In the beekeeping world, the queen is useful for about two years. You wanna keep an eye on her laying patterns, but you probably wanna take a class to learn about all of that stuff and I definitely recommend that. The last type of bee is the drone bee. These are the males of your hive. They are bigger than all of the females, even before hatching they're bigger. And you'll see this in this next video clip from class. Drone cells are over here looking at you like a 22 bullet sticking out at you. These things protruding out, sticking out. Everything else is flat. Worker cells are all flat. They stick out like a 22 bullet stuck down inside the cell. 
Any colony will have between 0 and 500 drones. They only have one purpose, and that is mating. However, they're not going to mate with their own queen. They're going to fly out and mate with a queen from another hive. When it gets cold and winter is coming and the colony has to take care of themselves, they will kill off all of the males so that they don't have to give up extra food so that they can survive the winter. So none of the males are going to make it through the winter. Tough luck. Another thing we learned about was problems facing hives. The biggest one is mites. Here's our instructor telling us a little bit about that. Right there, the biggest problem we've got in beekeeping. The biggest problem we got, those are mites. The mites came along in the late 80s and destroyed 50% of the United States bees. Two other problems facing hives are wax moths and beetles. And our instructor gave us some great ways to deal with these problems, but he made it clear that you're never going to eliminate them. You're only going to keep them under control and manage them. But he made it clear too that if you have a strong and healthy hive, you're not going to have any major problems. So that's a great relief for us. In the afternoon, we started learning about hives and what to expect in the first year. Here's the instructor teaching a little bit about that. Okay. So you got string bottoms. Alright. Then ideal situation is what we call brood boxes. It sits on there. Ten frames are inside. Start off, you want to start off with one box. You introduce your bees into it. I'll show you all that later. You've got ten frames. And your ideal is to have two of these brood boxes like this. Your goal, first year, to have two of these brood boxes up. You get these two boxes full of bees and honey in there by the time fall gets here, more than likely you've got enough to get through the winter. And that's going to be your goal to get started the first year. When you add another box, it's what we call the 710 rule. 710. When seven of the ten frames are drawn out, you add another box. That's your goal the first year. <coughs> After learning about the first year, we moved on to what to do with the second year and how to add boxes. Here's a little bit about that. You can throw two boxes going. If you happen to get those two boxes full, you've got a lot of nectar flow, you need more room, then you will come along with a smaller box, which you see the size difference there. It's two thirds the size. You put it on top. Now these are, these are two of deep, what we call deep boxes or brood boxes because that's where the bees are raised, it's called brood. This is called a medium box because of the medium size or it's called a super, what we call a honey super. Box on, you get it, you have to get it full of honey, then you add your second box. This is going to be the second year. So you'll wind up with two brood boxes where your bees are raised and you do not rob any honey out of these two boxes. You do not touch it. That is theirs to keep. You rob everything above the brood boxes. Everything above. Lastly, we learned about introducing the queen and the necessary equipment that we're going to need. This ended our seven hours of instruction on beginning beekeeping. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, please hit the like button and leave a comment about your experience keeping bees. If you're not a subscriber, please hit the Sniping Rhino Ranch logo and become one. That way, you won't miss any of our future videos about bees, where we stop talking about having bees and actually get our own bees to become beekeepers. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.